think we're going live. Uh, figured out? I think so. I think we're. Hey! We're there. <laughs> what a nightmare. What a nightmare. I can this way. This way. Yeah, I, can, I can do it. Okay. Can you get me a What's up, buddy? I got a question for you. Yeah. Can we switch dates? Sure, what date? Um, eight. We, you're down for next week, right? Okay. Can I switch that for the 15th? Yeah, I'm, I have a week that's a problem at all. We are. That's Sunday. No, the 15th is that game's on a Friday night. Uh, Look on your calendar. No, I can't. Check. Yeah, I can't. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Well, I thought for sure I could. But. Well, if it was the next week, you could, because that's a Friday night. That's a Friday night. Sorry, we have all these. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, no problem. All Yeah, it's on. So when you're when you 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 the things they don't teach you in seminary. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. God's grace through Christ is offered to everyone to so know that whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever you're going through, you are welcome here this morning. I want to start with just a couple of minutes, a couple of announcements first. Um, we send our first song, Reminder for Oral Moran, and pick up all of your prayer requests. So go ahead and get those ready. Uh, we are starting really a new time. It is so exciting to see what is going to happen beginning next week. Um, out on the uh, table in the entryway, you'll see some of these cards about our kickoff next week. And... Um, and then on the back, it describes a little bit about what we, how we invite people. So you want to, you want to, you've got somebody, you want to grab these and share these with people. Uh, get those in the back. 
Um, we are going to have a brunch afterwards next week. We have special, really special music uh, during the service next week. If you bring your backpacks, we will bless your backpacks and those things next week. And it will be an incredible time of fellowship. So there's going to be some new, a couple of videos that I'm going to share this week on Facebook. So if you've got Facebook, watch for those. And then let me encourage you to like, uh, share, and follow our page because you're going to start to see a lot of video stuff coming. And uh, you'll want to do that. And we, what a great way to invite people is to share this information. Um, we have really for the next few weeks, we have some incredible music coming up and some special times with the, our youth that we're doing. Um, do you have your bulletin? Everybody grab your bulletin. Look on the back of it for me, will you? Look on the back of your bulletin. We have a QR code now. It makes electronic giving easy. Uh, we've used these in other churches for a while now, and it's super easy. You just put your picture, your camera over there. Uh, would you do us a favor? Would you try that? Uh, we need to have, um, what do we, like 10 people do $3 or $5 or something just to get it up and running. So if you could try that for us, we would sure appreciate it. Um, if you want to get more, that's okay too. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, this technology will take more than $3. Uh, <laughs> Boy, I have just learned so much about that technology. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, reminder that CCC, tell me again, Tom. Um, Coffee. Cookies. 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 Tuesday morning, because Tom and Anita are going to be gone the next week, so Tuesday morning, we're going to have CCC, so don't forget that. Um, what else you got? Have you got anything? Have you got anything? It's turned on to the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> Slideshow in the like 
full, like fully. Because right now it's like not. I know, I'm just trying to fool. Oh, okay. Go up with the mouse a little bit. Like up here. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, can I have the TV one? Thank you. What, what application is this? Because I don't, I don't, I don't know this one. This, this one's Power Boy. <clears throat> There you go. How are we doing? You're good. Yeah. All right, and then if we could do from the beginning, make it big. That's what I was going to do. All right. Good. Okay. Got it. Signal. Yeah. Whew. It says no signal up on the TV. I've never seen that before. <laughs>
What's that? The QR code works? All right. We'll have a new headline that says on Labor Day we had uh, $100,000 donated. <laughs> I'm specifically looking at some of you. <laughs> hey, you got a green bait, right? Um, this is that part of our service each and every week where we have the privilege of going before God as a family of faith, knowing that when we pray together, there's real power in our prayers. We generally start by uh, sharing some joys and concerns. Today we have a couple of prayer requests. One, we want to pray for uh, Beth and Donovan as they're out on vacation out west, and we pray that they will have a wonderful, wonderful vacation. We also want to pray for... I guess the world, as um, today there have been some hostage bodies recovered, and uh, one of those was an American, and um, you know, I've had a lot of discussions about this in the last week, and regardless of our situation in this country, a lot of us don't realize just how uh, blessed we are, because for the rest of the world, we're we're pretty we're pretty well off. Tonight, when we go to bed, I don't think any of us have any real concerns about bombs being dropped on us, about armies invading. Today, um, we're going to celebrate uh, this Labor Day weekend that we'll talk about in a little bit. So, as we go to prayer today, we hold the world before God, asking for care, comfort, and healing. Let's pray, shall we? Gracious and loving God, today on this holiday weekend, we come before you thankful for all the ways that you've blessed us. Lord, sometimes it's not easy, sometimes it's hard, sometimes we forget that in the midst of that blessing, you, in the midst of those troubles, you have indeed blessed us. But Lord, we also know that there are many around the world today, humanity's brothers and sisters from all corners of the world that have it difficult. Lord, there's families that are gonna grieve today for many reasons, war, hunger, disease, all of those kinds of things. And today, we bring forward all of those that are suffering in any way, asking for your care, your comfort, your healing and peaceful touch. But more than anything, Lord, for all of those, we pray your presence and your peace upon each and every one that they might know that even though today's tough, even though today is hard, even though the storms of life rage, through it all, you are with them, Lord, arm in arm, step for step, ready to carry them through, even such a time as this. Lord, for all of this, we give you thanks and praise. Now let us join together with our sisters and brothers around the world this morning as we pray the prayer that your son taught us when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, let's take just a minute. Um, this is gonna be the last week that we'll do offering this way. Next week we're gonna, we're gonna have a different way that we're gonna move into offering. But what we'll do today is we'll ask the ushers to pass the offering plates. We'll take some time and Jessica will play for us and we'll just renew our minds and then we'll say thanks. 
to God for all the blessings.
The Labor Day parade of, the, of that time was about 10,000 workers that took unpaid leave and marched from City Hall past Union Square, uptown to 42nd Street and inland in Wendell's Park um, for a concert, speeches, and a picnic. There, are two, uh, there were two contenders for the title of Labor Day founder. Some argue that the American Federation of Labor co-founder Peter McGuire was the person who proposed the idea. However, others believe that it was the Central Labor Union Secretary, Matthew McGuire, who first came up with it, not related. Oregon was the first to declare Labor Day as an official holiday in 1887. Labor Day is considered the unofficial uh, NFL season kickoff. Um, <laughs> 99.44% of the time, the NFL plays its first official season uh, on the Thursday after Labor Day. Okay, now it gets interesting. The National Hot Dog and Sausage Council <laughs> considers Labor Day to be the official end of hot dog season. <laughs> Kids will be sorry about that. Americans eat about 7 billion hot dogs between Memorial Day and Labor Day. <laughs> Seven billion. Uh, things have changed though. We progress. Good news, we talked about this, right? Uh, you can now wear white after Labor Day. <laughs> uh, according to Emily Post, that Victorian tradition is no longer followed and it is perfectly okay to don your white clothes after Labor Day or if you spend your winter in Florida. <laughs> More than half of Americans are expected to travel over Labor Day weekend. And this is big news, Labor Day 1955, the very first Waffle House opened. Oh. <laughs> What are you going to do today? What are you going to do tomorrow? Um, I would guess there are probably people that are going to grill, right? Who's going to grill? Grill something, right? Put it up there. Uh, who's going to go somewhere and see family? Who's going to uh, work around the house and do basically the same thing you do every other day? <laughs> right? Labor Day started, though with this idea workers of all ages were working seven days a week minimum 12 hours a day and if you can imagine this it seems uncomprehendable today that a large portion of those were kids the working conditions were dangerous uh, manufacturing was a bigger deal during this period of time, so it was hot, it was rough, and that's what we were doing with our kids and our, and, and our, and our workers at the time. So at some point it got to where they had to stand up and say, enough! We're at least going to take one day to let our bodies heal. We're going to take one day so that we can be with our family. We're going to take at least one day for ourselves. We have to do that sometimes, don't we? Now, we talked about this earlier. Pastors don't actually have to do this. They, uh, they promised us when we started an hour a week and no math. So if I get you guys to do all the work, I don't even have to do an hour. <laughs> so it's, it's not about, you know, us, and, but have you ever got to that point where you've just been working, 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 and things are going crazy, and, and you just had to have some time off? What's our, you know, our, our, our American motto today? How's life, how's it going? How are you doing? Oh, most of the time you're going to get an answer like crazy busy. Because... All the things that we used to do with work and, and school and all those things, now we've added to them all kinds of activities. Young families today are on the move more than they had ever moved. And sometimes it gets to the point where you say, enough. Enough. It's 
hard to get up every morning. Where's our, where's our high school kids? Hard to get up every morning and go to, go to school, right? Yeah, that's real fun. Wait till you get to be older, it gets even better. <laughs> so, I wonder though, in the midst of being crazy busy, let me, let me introduce an idea to you. Have you ever considered intentionally taking time to rest your spirit? It's, this, is, this is more complicated, this, this uh, verse that we read today, than, than just taking time. But let's consider this a minute. This is, the, the reading today was from Psalm 46. It says, Come, behold the works of the Lord. So we're talking about all the things that, that God is accomplishing. See what um, he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease at the end of the earth. He breaks the bow. He uh, shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. There's a lot going on here, right? Things are busy. And in the midst of being busy, the instruction says, be still. In the midst of the busyness, it says, be still. I'm going to confess that's hard for me. If you ever, I mean, let's just take a break from that. Are you getting uneasy yet? <laughs> Silence makes us kind of uncomfortable, doesn't it? Are you? Imagine for a minute that uh, you were at school and um, uh, the lesson that day didn't really excite you. And, and it's a long lesson. Can you hold your attention? See, I can't. I, I, have a, I really have an attention problem. And after about 10 seconds, I need to move on. I need to get something to do, right? I, I can fidget. Anybody have those fidgets? Any of you guys have fidgets? I should have had a fidget. That would have been a great thing for me. I, I, I need to do that. But yet, here in the midst of this, God says, be still. Be still. So the first challenge we have is just to take a breath. Stop for a minute. And intentionally recognize the presence in our lives of the holy. Now, there's a challenge that comes with this. Because you can choose to take a minute and be still. But the world around us often isn't still. So I want to be silent. I want to sit here. I want to take a breath. But then the demands of the world come and distract me. I can spend a couple of minutes and then before I, the phone rings, I get a text, a message. Somebody wants something, right? Do you guys see the, 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 uh, the commercial where um, the mom is trying to eat breakfast and everybody asks, where's my shoes, where's my keys, where's my, and they all come to mom to ask that question. There's a, there's a lot about that that's reality. So in the midst of that, how do we handle that? What do we do about that? I think it's interesting that over and over and over we find a hint from Jesus. Jesus tells us exactly what to do. Listen to this from Luke chapter 5. But now more than ever, the word about Jesus had spread abroad. Many crowds would gather to hear him and, and to be cured of their diseases. But after that, he would withdraw to a deserted place and pray. Everybody wanted something. Uh, Jesus wanted to take a, 
a few minutes for himself. Jesus wanted to calm himself. Jesus wanted to be still and found it difficult because everybody was coming to him constantly wanting things. So he got to the point where he had to withdraw. He had to go to a place that was quiet so that he could be still. Mark 6 says, after saying farewell to them, he went up to the mountain and prayed. Really what we, what we find here is Jesus bracketing major points in our life with prayer. I've had a really busy day, so I pray before it so that I can sort of recharge my battery and get prepared. And then at the end of my day, in order to unwind, I withdraw and pray again to bring me back. Again, back to Mark chapter 1. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got out, went to a deserted place, and there he prayed. Sometimes, we're going to need to do this early in the morning. Maybe that's the the only time that we have available to withdraw and pray. Maybe it's going to be late at night. Maybe, you know, somebody told me the other day that uh, when we think back to the old days, right? We think back to the old days. Um, do you know that now today, 50% of our population works on Sundays? Isn't that amazing? 50% of our population works on Sundays. So Sundays, we can't count on Sunday morning any morning to, anymore to be the one time where we can withdraw and spend time in prayer. Now we've, with our crazy busy lives, we've got to find that moment early in the morning when it's still dark out, late at night as the sun has gone down, um, 20 minutes at lunchtime, Five minutes when we can get it. Maybe it's uh, uh, maybe it's uh, Steve was telling me today about watching on the news and and the, and the, the tragedy that had happened um, across the sea. Maybe it's a breath prayer when we see an ambulance go by. There are times when we can remember. Be still and withdraw and pray. And we say, well, that's hard until we remember that for our spiritual health, it's essential. Imagine for a minute that you got prescribed medicine. A lot of people take medicine, right? have a prescription for something that ails us <clears throat> and you just decided that you were too busy to take your medicine and the, the, the first day well you, you forget to take your medicine it's probably nothing disastrous but if that goes on and on and on and you forget to take your prescribed medication there's a pretty good chance that your health is going to suffer. It's the same way with this. Labor Day came, and the people knew that they needed some time away from work. Today, we know that we need some time away from our crazy, busy lives to recharge spiritually. I think this is a challenge for us this week. Let's try this for one week. Start tonight, start tomorrow, find a time, you're gonna make time. Somehow we're gonna make time. We're gonna withdraw from the world and, and as long as it can be, spend some time in prayer. Now, um, when I was first going through 
seminary, I, uh, I tried this. And, and it's a practice, and you have to get good at it. The, the very, I used to do this a lot, and uh, I would withdraw, things would be quiet, I'd breathe, and after about 30 seconds, I fell asleep. But then a funny thing happened. After about a week, I could go five minutes, and then 10 minutes, and then 15 minutes. And it wasn't long before I had an hour where I could be in prayer comfortably. But it took practice. And then here's the thing that happened. I let the world distract me. And I got away from it. And I quit. I quit that practice. And spiritually, one day I found out that I wasn't rested. And I had to go back. Prayer is a habit. We celebrate Labor Day every year. It's a habit in our country. Prayer is a daily habit that we have to be intentional about if we're going to be spiritually rested. So this week, you got your bulletins? Everybody got your bulletin? Write this down. Put this somewhere. Put it on your dashboard, put it on a mirror in the bathroom, wherever you'll see it. And ask yourself, day, time, and place. Day, time, and place. Where and when will I be still and know that God is there. Doesn't matter how long, when will I withdraw and pray? When will I be still? I think that will change our lives. And imagine this as a family of faith if we do that together. Let's take a moment of prayer, shall we? Oh Lord, in our crazy, busy lives, sometimes we don't realize how much noise is around us. For today, tomorrow, and going forward, help us to block out the crazy busy and find time to spend with you. Lord, renew our spirits. Help us to rest in you, ever growing closer, day after day, hour after hour. Lord, let our prayers reflect our love for you each and every day. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you now to stand as you're able. We're going to sing a little bit. And don't forget our new tradition, our renewed tradition of our closing song.
sisters and brothers in Christ, as we prepare to leave this sacred place and enter back out into the world for one more week, remember, fear not, do not let your hearts be troubled, and in the midst of the storm, remember to trust in God. And may the blessing of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit go with you today and every day. Go with God, and God will surely go with you. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Okay, I've got, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. i See this, and then do this on there. Glad you guys are here. Happy to Bunch be here. Trouble, troublemakers up you know, right there. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. I saw they were selling popcorn yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we didn't do it yesterday. No, we did it last weekend. We'll be at Lowe's. We'll be doing Lowe's on the 15th. That's what she'll be doing. But we've been, we're doing it every week into the every through the end of September. Oh. <laughs> I should have known. Yeah. Always a kid. We're gonna head to Flea Farm now. <laughs> the pack selling popcorn up there today. Oh my god. Yeah. There last year they sold about sixteen thousand dollars. Total over the course of a month. And, a, and a week and a half. Than, yeah, less than two weeks. Right. Oh my god. Uh, so, we're lucky to have uh, one of our members is works for the council. Yeah. He can get us popcorn when we need it. Yeah. We have over full way above our yeah. expectations at this point. As of this moment, we're at twelve thousand sixty-six dollars, which is insane. So we're, we're struggling to keep up with products. Luckily, he's able to get it for us. So we'll have money to do things. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, very light blue. So there's just no money in the world. We're going to stay home. We're going to go to Flea Farm now. So. She had a donut. She actually ate before we came to church this she picked out she picked out some chocolate glazed donuts from Quick Star. We stopped and got a car wash and 
Yeah. Put it on the garbage. So you decide that here you can take one too. The place is kind of crazy. We've got everything. I know. I I stopped in there. Yeah, we've been there. I must have been the day after. It was a good Friday. Yeah. It was really fun. Oh, there's all kinds of fun stuff in there. As you're checking out, there's a stand there with onions and sweet potatoes. I'm like, we do have everything, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. You thought about it. I see coming from. I don't know where they're passing. It has to be lower. Uh, yeah, Casey didn't get that high. I don't know where it was. Yeah, they were at 308 last night. Yeah. And we saw they were still at 308. I think we, got, we were able to get the 15% ethanol. Yeah. And that was at 260. Yeah, we have too many gas stations. I think that will change. I think that one will die. I think, I think it's been it, on the verge of, well, that, it doesn't seem like it's over. And when they made the change, people don't even know how to get to it. Yeah. And they, they didn't put up a sign. Yeah. I went in there just for Jingles a long time, a couple years ago. And, uh, it looked pretty sad, but... I paid X amount of gas, and I did my like, okay, it was wrong, because I said, well, no, they, because, oh, we didn't change the sign. I just totally ignored it. I'm like, what is it? If I don't, so I, wrote, I sent an email to the corporate address. The days of the country store. Yeah, so. the old country store. Yeah, we used to, we used to, guys used to walk up there. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys were so close back. We were close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then about once a day we go up and get Facebook cards or something yeah. or something. In the summertime. Maybe chew. Maybe chew, yeah. Oh, yeah, Sam, Sam was with me. Coming back from the church or something. I went past all over the houses. Yeah. That's pretty neat. I actually saw someone sitting down with a bat in the Yeah, they've really done some yeah. stuff. Yeah. They put solar panels yeah. on the house. Yeah. 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 Yeah.